Let's save a 10,000 horsepower supercharger. This thing was brought to me, and the problem was it just was wearing out the OD strips, which are the seal strips on the outside of the rotors that contact, or not really supposed to contact, the outside part of the case. What happens is they get up against the case and it actually burns these seals up. Then it opens up the clearance between the rotor and the case and causes a lot of leakage, which means less blower boost. If you've watched my previous videos, you've seen me do this a hundred times, taking the in-frames off and putting the rotors up on this little carousel here. Now I'm gonna show you what these outside seals look like. These are actually supposed to be somewhat transparent. I'll show you here in the light, if I can just turn it just right, you can see how rough and burned up this seal area is. It is not supposed to look like that. Now these marks that are on the rotors are from previous runs back in the day where it looks like it had some stuff go through the actual rotors themselves. Those marks really don't affect the blower per se so much, but um, it just gives it some character basically. Now these white seals here are called the ID seals. They're made out of Teflon and what they do is they seal that lobe as it's coming into each other to create that seal so it can make some boost. Here, I'm just knocking off what we call the clover leaves. These are the ends of the rotors that actually have strips in those also. Now, there's different manufacturers of rotors. There's Darren Mare, DMPE, there's PSI, there's Bill Miller. There's, there's a lot of rotors out there that we can run in top fuel. So these just happen to be PSI rotors and that's why they have the clover leaves like they do. So right now, I'm going to take out the OD strips um, I'm just using a pick to pull it up and you'll see that these strips, they just are curled up. They've been so hot and I don't know the situation on this blower from the last time, but there's an area here on the end of one lobe that is way opened up. Matter of fact, it was actually missing material uh, after it was run. So I'm just going to kind of stake this thing down and get it close to where it needs to be. And then I'm going to take this tool that we made, oh, years ago. And I just operate this tool. I just pull it down through the groove itself. Now it's a groove that's shaped like a triangle. So it holds that uh, urethane piece down inside there and it's good. So I'm just gonna knock the top edges off those uh, stake marks that I put on there. Now, if you had newer rotors and stuff, of course, you're not gonna go through all this effort. You won't have to do that. So here is the urethane, what we call plastic, that goes on the OD of the rotor. These are the outside seals. You can see it's shaped like a triangle. Basically, this stuff is the same stuff they make, say, a urethane skateboard wheel out of or you know, something like that. But it's a particular type of urethane. Now, I just lubed the groove up a little bit. And when you pull these things in, it's a pretty good effort. Um, I've had the piece break before, and if you look back there, I'm just kind of readjusting that uh, screw on the back that holds this, this uh, rotor. I've actually whacked my elbow on that thing, and I'm telling you what, it, it's one of the worst feelings. So now that I've pulled it in, it actually stretches this urethane. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this urethane back to its normal uh, shape. When you pull it like that, it gets real thin. And what can happen is after a run, it can actually shrink and then you'll have a gap at the end of the rotor. So I'll knock this all back in, try and build it back up. So when I do cut it, it'll relax to where it's in its normal state. So I'll flip this thing over because I can't hammer left-handed very well at all. So I'm going to restake that area that was in question just to make sure that it holds that OD strip in place. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to trim off the excess urethane uh, from pulling it in. You have to make sure that you get uh, a cut that maybe is recessed just a little bit because you don't want it sticking out and influencing the uh, clover leaf that goes on the outside. We have very, very tight clearances. Here I'm measuring the old rotor. I wanted to see exactly how high this plastic was sticking up. And actually the plastic is sunk down in the rotor. That's not what you want. That's a sign of being hot and it just kind of shrinks down. Now this is what that strip looks like after I've knocked it in. You can see how high it is. And now we're gonna take it over to this badass cutter. This blower rotor cutter is made by Darren Mayer, DMPE, who makes a lot of the superchargers that are out here. 
Now I can adjust the height on the rotor cutter itself by a 10 thousandths. Also, this thing is on a rail. It's the same stuff they use in CNC uh, machinery for the axes to move on. And it's extremely accurate and it's well built. There's a handle down here to pull on so you're not influencing the motor uh, when it's up against the rotor. Now these two stops are right here, go on each side of the lobe itself. And so as you're sliding that thing down, it's actually turning that rotor so it keeps that plastic centered on the cutter. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load the rotor in the machine. We use the same size bearings what we do in our front and rear end frames. So I even keep those separate, I always have the one with an F on marked on the front, the one in the R in the back, just in case there's a difference between the bearings. So when you're cutting this thing, it's apples and apples every time. So what we're gonna do with this machine, try and explain it, we're gonna cut the plastic down to a size that fits inside that case and gives us some clearance. You can see here where that rubber snubber is up against the edge of that rotor. And as you move it down through here, you'll see this thing twist. So I'll roll this thing down through there and make this first initial cut. You don't want to be uh, too fast with the first cut because you are taking off the most amount of material. Um, the next cuts on this, after we measure it, they'll be within a thou or half thou cuts. And so you can go a little faster on those. But once I get this strip cut, I'll go ahead and take my measuring tool and I'm going to measure how high the plastic is on top of the rotor. Now I have a good idea about how much plastic should be sticking up because I've actually measured the rotor in the case with no plastic in it. We call that a metal to metal measurement. It's close. Uh, I know it's going to be a little bit big. I'll cut these other uh, lobes and we're going to throw this thing back in the blower case. So at the shop here, I don't have anybody working with me too much anymore. So damn it, I got to clean up after myself. Uh, anyway, so unload this thing. And again, we're going to load this thing in the case. You see, I'm kind of anal about these bearings. They go back exactly where they came from. I'm going to sand down the top edges of this OD material because it kind of leaves a sharp edge on it. It'll sometimes give you a false sense of the clearance that you're measuring with, with a feeler blade, because it might be on that edge a little bit. So I'm just kind of rounding that uh, seal off a little bit. I'm also putting on the clover leaves again, and I'm cleaning the blower case out, and we'll just see where this thing ends up. You gotta admit, this little carousel for the holds the blower is pretty trick. Trick Tools is one of the first companies that actually made this years ago. And then also they make some cylinder head uh, holding fixtures just like this. So I put the covers back on, I'll throw the gear on the front and I'll give it a quick turn. I can already tell right away that this damn thing's way too tight. So basically what I'm gonna do is, is go back through this whole process again. It kind of sucks, but you can measure it. There's a micrometer that's out there and I have one, but it always isn't accurate um, because these cases are never the same from one end to the other after they've been ran a while. So anyway, I like measuring it with my over centerpiece. And again, this thing is so easy to change and to get the right depth of cut with using this machine. It is just incredible. It really changed it. We used to have to take everything apart, put a shim in it, bolt it back together. And it was kind of a guess if you had the right shim and make sure that you didn't have a chunk of uh, material underneath it or you'd jack up a cut and then you'd come back, end up putting new strips in it again. So this really has changed the game by able to change the height of that cutter without having to put shims in it. So back together again. Believe me, when you're building a blower that you haven't built before, and it's a train wreck anyway, you're gonna have these rotors in and out of this thing at least 10 times probably, uh, unless you're really lucky. In this case, uh, I'm not that lucky. What's going on here is that the case has moved a little bit right where this support bar here in the center is, and we're gonna have to do a little bit of work on it. Both rotors are this way, so, I'm going to show you here in just a second how I figure out how much to take off and the reason why I'm doing it. This here is the thou feeler gauge. And when I put it in here, I'm trying to do two things with once here. I'm holding the camera and trying to uh, show you how this locks this, you know, one thou feeler blade. So we already know that it's too tight again. So I will end up taking a little bit more cut, uh, cut off that OD, but I'm going to have to do some sanding on this case. 
this is a great way of knowing exactly how much plastic you have sticking up on the rotor itself. I'll write that down and I'll know uh, to a fact of where I need to take that off at. Um, again, I did that and I put the rotor back in and I've got one little area that's given me an issue. Again, it's in that center support area. Just to confirm what I'm feeling, because I can actually see when that rotor is coming around there where it's hitting at and getting hard and it's all the lobes. Um, here's the area. You can kind of see this area, it's kind of shinier than others. And so what I did here is I put the other rotor back in and I'm going to rotate it over and I'm gonna spray some Dicom, you know, some blue layout fluid. I'm gonna spray that in here and I'm gonna rotate it. And I'm gonna see where it's hitting at. I'm gonna make sure that that is a spot. I never ever like to sand on a case below three o'clock and below nine o'clock. Those are the areas where that rotor hits. So you can see right here, sure enough, that bar is raised up and it's on both sides and I'm just gonna have to knock it down. Uh, most cases, guys would put blower cases on this, you know, uh, to fix the issue. But I have learned a way to sand uh, these cases and not jack them up too much. So here's a little tip I'm going to give you. So when sanding something, you always kind of want to know how much material you're taking off at a time. Now, what I do is I take like some 36 grit and I'll actually scratch the area where I'm going to do the work at. So once I get down through those scratches, I know that that's about a thousandth of an inch of material gone. So I'll go ahead and sand that down to finish off those scratches. Also, those scratches will tell you if you're doing it evenly throughout the whole run. So, and I also ended up with some thousand on it just to kind of polish it up. So anyway, I threw some more Dicom on there and I'll put the rotor in again and we'll check it all over. Once it's together, I check my clearances again. So I tilt this puppy up. This is the last one, hopefully the last time, and it came out real good. Um, it doesn't have as much plastic sticking up on the rotors as I'd like, and I'll get into that here in just a little bit. So both rotors are ready, and we're gonna marry these two things together. I wanna first talk about the gears real quick. One's the drive gear, that's on the right-hand side. The other one's the coast gear, the drive gear, is driven by the blower belt and it drives the other rotor. Now, these here are the clover leaves, and this is where the lobe actually sets inside the other lobe. This is a, what's called a handcuff. We're gonna bolt these two together, suck them together, and shove them in the case. So I got it back together and it spins nice. Listen to this puppy. You can hear her sucking some air. Isn't that crazy? Anyway, so once it's together, I double check the OD clearance on it. And I'm also looking at how the uh, inside of each rotor is setting down inside the other valley. Now there'll be a witness mark down inside that valley from the other rotor. Um, you'd like to see a nice harsh line. We don't have that on this thing because we don't have as much plastic sticking up on the rotor. That's because this case is an old, old generation case and it doesn't allow for the rotor diameter to have plastic on top of it that much. So that limits how good this blower is gonna be by how much plastic you can have on top of that rotor. The more plastic you can have, the better seal you'll have and a better blower. So that's how you save a 10,000 horsepower nitro burning uh, supercharger. A lot of teams wouldn't have went through that effort to fix the blower case and that kind of thing but this actually came out pretty decent. The only thing I don't like about it is the amount of plastic sticking up on the OD of the rotor. Uh, it should be higher. That way it has a better contact in the root of that blower uh, rotor on the other side. But there's nothing we can do with that. It's an old case. Uh, the bore on it was different from the very get-go. Uh, the case has probably had a bang or something like that and it knocked the bottom of that case up a little bit. Generally, I would never sand a case like that. But in this instance where um, it's not going to be a top 10 uh, blower that's gonna be needed out on the NHRA circuit, uh, this thing's gonna work just fine. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it's kind of long-winded and everything, but there's so much more work that goes on one of these things than anybody realizes. Thanks for watching.